All right. Robert Dawson. Yes, sir. So we're starting a podcast. Yes. Yeah. What uh, What made you want to begin a podcast now? Well, social media is the big thing, and mm-hmm. I'm sort of a real estate celebrity, so I figured it's a good combination. <laughs> um, you know, you can't do but so much Facebook and Twitter and uh-huh. Instagram and podcast are a little bit longer. Yeah. Probably more exciting for me because I like to have fun. I, I know it'll be exciting for me. I know. Back We're going to have a good time. Getting people in. Um, it's going to be exciting. What, what, why, like, why specifically now? What, what made you put off until now? Well, I was doing a lot of state and national work and um, I decided to take a little sabbatical from that and yeah. spend more time at home and enjoy my home and my family and relax a little bit and quite frankly miss uh giving back to the community so much yeah. as i have for years so yeah. here we are yeah it's exciting state and national boards yes uh, kind of an overarching you know bird's eye view what do you do on these boards well there's a lot of different things to do um because there's so many committees and so many opportunities to serve um i was on the diversity committee the National Diversity Committee, Mm -hmm. um, where we gave input in changing federal fair housing laws. Um, I have been an RPAC trustee and on the RPAC Distribution Committee, which is our Realtor Political Action Committee, which lobbies for things that help the public, everything real estate. Um, The State Professional Development Committee, which raises the bar for people as realtors and Um, makes training and professionalism a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's also been the um, broker engagement and broker involvement person for the state of Virginia, which is um, a program that NAR has that trickles down to the state where you have a person that gets the brokers involved and sends things to the brokers and brings things to the brokers so you can you can create more involvement from them. So they will, of course, get their realtors and within their offices up to snuff and hopefully helping and volunteering and, and providing their service. And so there's just so many things, yeah. but it's a lot of time away. It's a big commitment. It, um, for all that I was doing, it totaled about five to six weeks a year, actually work days yeah. out of five or six weeks. So now I decided I needed a little break from that, take a little sabbatical and, and give back to my community. And that's, that's, this podcast as a result. So of now that. we get five to six weeks of Robert Dawson. We're going to get five to six <laughs> weeks of Robert Dawson telling the world how to be a wonderful place. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So the are we going to focus on real estate? We are not really going to focus on real estate. Okay. I, I think given my time in the real estate business that I can't help but have some real estate. But, yeah, yeah. I, but our, really f- our focus is going to be on community involvement mm-hmm. and different people that coming in that can talk to people about what they do, mm-hmm. rather it's the United Way or rather it's the Alzheimer's Association or the Cancer Society, etc. cetera. Um, really more exposure for those people, explaining what they do, how they help the community and how other people can get involved. Mm-hmm. And hopefully maybe this will um, really be a landing page for realtors to, to pick up some um, local volunteerism, but then also educate the public on what these people actually do and and how they do what they do and how they reach our public in Lynchburg and the four surrounding counties. Actually, Central Virginia, all the way to Charlottesville. We'll have some Charlottesville people. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got so many local, and I'm always surprised how I'll meet a new organization, uh, nonprofit, you name it, and it's right here in my backyard. Had yes. no idea. I didn't even know there was a need for something like yes. that. And not only that, there's this thriving nonprofit mm-hmm. helping folks in different ways. Yeah, um, Hom- they, homeless people are a prime example. I think yeah. everybody in and around Lynchburg thinks that we have no homeless population, and we have a good size homeless population. Yeah, um, and I, and I think because they don't see them on the streets everywhere they go, they don't realize the numbers, and and they do exist, and mm-hmm. they don't realize. Um, things that are done for those people because there's a need and it's and that's probably one of the saddest things is um, even think even to think about people that feel like the, there's nowhere for them to fit into society that's just that's awful yeah yeah and, and not to get off on the, a tangent there but even the the backpack program you, you had done that's with Rustburg. 
Uh, yes, that's yeah. with Rustburg Elementary, and that's a. I had no idea that was going on. Well, papers. it's 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 a it's a wonderful wonderful thing, and and what I do every year, um, really, it it feeds about sixty or seventy people, maybe eighty children that. Mm-hmm. You know, you there's so many aspects of everything, and everything has such a broad net, um, and that's a prime example because it's such a broad net. You know, the the federal government or the state government will make sure that a child has lunch when mm-hmm. they go to school, but then the thought process, of course, did not exist for so long about well, what do those children eat on the weekends? Mm-hmm. Well. If they don't, if they can't afford lunch and they don't bring lunch and they don't have food, then what happens on the weekends? So the backpack program is backpack stuff full of food for them to take home on the weekend and so they're eat. Not hungry yeah, all so weekend. they're not starving. And a lot of these people, when I first got involved in this, there's there's so many children. I mean, they their families they don't have heat in their homes. Mm-hmm. Um, people living in single wide homes with floors rotted out. Um, it just it's it's devastating. It's absolutely devastating. Well, I look forward to episode after episode meeting these folks you've built these relationships with over the last few decades mm-hmm. and opportunities all of us can do to to help if we feel so inclined. Well, uh, find and, one you like. And, yeah, and that's the goal. That's yeah. the real goal. And you just hit the nail on the head. The goal is to try to reach people in the community and and if they want to watch this for five minutes or 10 or 15 or 20 if if they if just you know if if a thousand or ten thousand people watch this uh, as we grow over the next year and you know one person a week says hey i need to get involved in the community i need to give back it's huge and and it's not you don't have to give you don't have to give financially you can volunteer and give your time um I have a client that's in a, in a nursing home facility. She's in assisted living, and um, I went to see her last week. I went to see her yesterday. And even when these people are paying for um, care, that doesn't mean they're getting the care. Mm-hmm. And her environment is definitely, and this is considered, quote, a nice facility, but her environment and her care is not what it should be. Um, you know, when when a patient is having lunch brought to them at 2 o'clock and a patient at 2 o'clock hasn't had a shower yet and, you know, a patient's paying four and five and $6,000 a month right. and, and you're there one time and see that those basic needs are not met. So that made me think, and I, you know, I, I talked to my um, client about this, is there, you know, people going in and, and being a support system for these people that, who is not mobile at all, um, thank goodness she can talk and she has her faculties about her, but she she's not mobile and she's only 77 years old, and as you get older like mm. I am, 77's not yeah. that far away, and <laughs> yeah. you don't, you hope old is 100, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, this is going to be exciting. This is going to be really nice. Um, If we can, is there a sneak peek into who we think might be our first guest? Well, yes. Um, The the backpack program is really, it's near and dear to my heart. And um, one of the United Way employees happened to be on an airplane with me. Okay. And um, she cornered me. Uh-huh. Of course, you know, you're on an airplane and it's not like you, you have a parachute, you're going to jump. So um, she was seated beside me and she is with the United Way and we started talking about programs. She knew that I was a native of Rustburg and so she threw the pitch of the backpack program. Yeah. And it was an absolute no brainer and, and there was no way that I could say no. Yeah. Period. I mean, it, it just there. There's no could not exist with yeah. what she explained to me. And then when I did, um, did my presentation to them, um, one of the people said, "Well, you know, why is this so touching to you?" And I think most people don't realize that I grew up. We, we were poor. My father died when I was four, and my mother raised five children by herself from four to fourteen. Um, we were in a big old house in Rustburg. We had heat in one room. 
Um, I compare my brother and sisters and I sleeping all in one bed, sort of like the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory with the grandparents. And it, it was cold. Yeah. And um, our bathroom had been added on, so the pipes froze and we yeah. didn't have a bathroom to use. So um, I used the term slop jar. Most people don't know what that is. And so um, I really relate it to these children and the need. And so since that time, I have participated with yeah. this and I don't think I'll ever stop well we'll see so we'll see we'll see how that goes uh, I guess next week we're gonna try and shoot for next week yeah so. we're gonna we're gonna roll Joan Phelps up in here Joan Phelps aka dragon and and, dragon. <laughs> and we're we're going to learn awesome. all about the United Way okay one thing I'll say that's really interesting and I'm gonna go ahead and get this pitch in is I have so many people say I don't want to give to the United Way because the funds don't stay locally. Yeah. Um, and that's that's could possibly be true because I think it's more regional now than it was years ago when yeah. I first got in the real estate business. But you can, as I have, you can dictate the program that you totally support. So, okay. so that thought process is not the case. Okay. And all of my money goes to that program. Yeah. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. I'm excited, yes. We're going to have some good episodes. Robert Dawson, thank you. Thank you, Mr. McKinney. (laughs) 